with that as a black woman and how do you still defend blackness through this black man that's perpetuating this thing and then for Kim as a white woman how do you then question and attack what is wrong with his behavior without being racist yeah I'm interested in the mundane, like the everyday mundane things. So when, when we live together as families, in, you create a unit. So the two of you came together and you created a unit. And in our units we have rules and regulations for us to function functionally as family. So, so for, for, just for the sake you created a family. For, so I'm interested in what were the things that caused conflict amongst the two of you, and how do you, what do you ascribe it to? Do you ascribe it to as personality factors or were they cultural factors? Then last question here. No, in front of you, in front of us here. Oh, okay. Okay, so um, earlier you said that you know, you know, uh, white people must have their own visa to figure out what they're going to do. Okay. So we are want to know what, what is that going to look like? Because the last time white people had a visa, we had the scramble for Africa, I mean, the National Party was a perpetual <laughs> white visa. So just to say that, how, like, how do we trust that a white visa with white South Africans is going to result in like, a proper socioeconomic change and not necessarily another apartheid, another slavery, another whatever? How do we trust that? what is supposed to happen is going to happen. Uh, yeah, that's my question. Um, okay, so I'm to you guys, but firstly, in terms of um, speaking about how white people always say, or sort of um, are boastful about the fact that I have black friends, so I, I can't be racist or whatever the case may be. And um, how do you go about, how did you go about pushing um, Kim and sort of educating her? And because that does get tedious, especially when you have friends that are not willing to learn. Um, and also to Kim, how, in terms of the consciousness, like how do you, what is, your role in terms of educating other white people and coming together and, and sort of um, caucusing and discussing how can we help or as allies or, I don't know if you sort of understand the, where my question is going. Okay, so we have, we have a response. Is, is the time 20, pa 10, 10, 20 past to one or past one? Okay, we have 10 more minutes, great. So please, uh, why don't you go mm. ahead? Mm. So I think I'll, I'll start and then work back. Mm. But um, yeah, in terms of what role I play as a white person in relation to other white people, um, the thing that I always have to be care careful of is getting on my high horse because um, I think what trips, what trips you up as a white person who is, is, is trying to be conscious and all of that is to start feeling like holier than thou and then telling other people how they should be. Um, so for me, it's to be very careful of that. Um, and yeah, I, I, in my work, I, I do try and go into spaces and facilitate that consciousness shifting process. Um, but there's also, again, that's the kind of like beginning steps. And then, and then one of my steps from here, which was Munster's challenge to me, in terms of like what would like a white and visa look like? And I actually don't know yet. You know, I, I don't know yet how that would unfold. But um, yeah, and then the mundane, Conflicts that we have, you have to help me answer. Um, you don't have to answer all the questions. Okay. You also can answer some of the questions. But there was, mm -hmm. I, I think the issue with our landlord and the yeah. dog. Between I, the two of you, I think. It's yeah, 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 yeah. But that also, maybe it was a slight tension between yeah. us because I was more like allowing and forgiving and I think the not seeing her. Yeah, I think the conflict came in terms of, so the landlord had, like we had an 800 bill for electricity. Um, and it was summer. So I go to Kim, look, 
you know, and the first time he's like, oh, let's just pay it. It's like, the white people say, okay, she has money, what can I say? Let's just pay the thing, okay? <laughs> so, fine. And it's like, okay, first month. Then the second month, I was like, okay, look, Kim, you know, probably this is not a problem for you, but it's becoming a problem for me <laughs> because it's summer, you can't pay this amount, and they sort it out. Then the discussion was like, who's going to talk to who? You know, are we going to go together as a as a collective or she must talk to her first because she used to like you and talk with her a lot compared to me so it's like okay can you just maybe talk to her a bit uh, about the situation you know why people must get together and solve this problem yeah, yeah. so yeah she went and talked to her then there was an issue that she was getting a divorce and was complication with something and also about these remember that oh, yeah. yes so on that, during that time, uh, so we decided, okay, let's just go together. So we went outside together. So there was tension the first time, the, the point of the story is like there was tension in terms of negotiation. You know, you have to go to the white landlord and the first time was tension, okay, let, let it go. But the second time we had like, a, it wasn't like tension of like fights, but it was like also who talks to who, what roles do we actually have? But I think what helped as well, do you remember Bernard? Also people sleeping over, for example, we had um, other her friends coming over and stuff, but nego negotiating it. And I think that actually helped uh, in, in, in a situation. I think part of the like, negotiation was when Leo was coming over and I should go uh, and I'll go elsewhere as well. So it was the negotiation of those things. And it helped also because we agreed to, sh to share like household things. 50-50 um, and it could have been quite a different story if we didn't so that the uh, food and stuff will share like we'll pay and actually do groceries together and if something runs out she will buy and next time I'll buy that type of thing so we kept the slips and whatever else so I think also communication helped so there wasn't super tension in terms of that also because we paid our way so it made and also we were getting the same wage in one level um, I think that helped. I think the and tension that came. Of yeah, and had lots of, uh, but the tension. I think when your sister came. Do you remember when we had to drop her off? Can I tell the story? Yeah, you can tell the story. Okay, so you know, so I had to drop her sister in this like some fancy like it's the first time in my life going and there's a driveway and you still have to drive inside the yard. Hey? <laughs> then you know you have reached a point where there's like uh, rich people here. Uh, so <laughs> the road. Yeah, yeah. The, the yard was like okay. So I come back uh, you know mm, and I say I just you know drop your sister. Hey, she's rich. Hey? Your family must be rich. And she was awkward about it because she, she, we never talked about how rich her family is or not. I'm not saying they are rich or whatever. I was like, but the, your, your sister works with, uh, you know, hangs out with very wealthy people. And it's like, yeah. And that I think created now, for the first time, seeing some class differentiation. For, and it was that moment. And I think that moment as well created uh, uh, not tension in, in, in terms of being alerted to that world for the very first time, so that also. Um, Imbizo. But if, I do believe that if you care about this country and the people, and for them, stop, if you, st if I did, if white people maybe one day, you stop having electric fences, security in your houses, long buildings. If you want a world where your kid can run around without running around, uh, without securities, then you have to envision a new world. You have to think about really that you have to recognize the people that you live with. <laughs> or there is gonna be, you're gonna remain in these uh, security fences with thousands of security and alarms. And like these days I live uh, in, in the suburbs and for the first time, I remember the first time when now I have to clock an alarm. It was oppressive because in the township I don't have to do that. And it's the most oppressive thing that every day when you run out of the door, <laughs> Yeah, it's the most, and psychologically, I don't know how you'd live with that and you think it's normal. And if that is your reality every day, then you, there is something wrong in, with this reality then. Then, then it's upon also that then we have to do something to change the reality to something else.
and it's not to educate, it's to have a frank conversation with people, and it's to also understand the interaction, the interracial thing, and also the structural things that enables you to actually live in that world every day and you think it's normal, worrying about the guys, switching on the thing, and it's gonna continue if this inequality doesn't actually stop. Then what do you do about it? Then that's another question. So it's not educating, it's not the visa of those things. So, uh, the gender question. Thank God, sorry, gender <laughs> questions. I'm very bad with gender, so. Um, I think, in the Feast Must Fall, there was an issue, gender was an issue, of course, black men are, you know, are sexist, and I think we have to deal with that, and I have, we have to be honest in that, and I, I think the, the black feminist, rightly so, call it out for what it is. But at the same time, how do we also build a bridge as a collective? Mm. Uh, in that process of calling it out uh, as it is and also building a bridge that as a collective we have to fight for and also fight for our freedom as black people which I fundamentally believe for and, and so on. And I think that is a difficult conversation and I, I don't think tactically in terms of what has been done is building that bridge. Uh, and I think that conversation has to happen um, and how it happens I'm not sure yet. And I think how do I deal with it? Brave. No, I'm not brave. I'm the most coward person in the world. Um, I think most of the time I tradition I'm not very traditional. So most of the time I, I, I avoid certain things that puts in that situation. Um, also, because of the choices that I made, I try also, like, well, you know, I like being kokaisi and, 